the process of quiet expiration, when you're just sitting there breathing quietly, usually involves only passive forces. Quiet inspiration moves the diaphragm, expands the rib cage a little bit by uh, stretching the costal cartilages and the pleural membranes. When you relax, these structures remove, return back to their resting state, shrinking the rib cage back to its resting state. If you want to exhale past the resting state, additional muscles of expiration can be used to uh, contract the thoracic cavity further. Contraction of expiration muscles will shrink the lungs and the rib cage beyond their resting state. The muscles that do this tend to be inferior on the body in order to be able to pull the rib cage downward. In addition, we have a set of abdominal muscles that can work indirectly in opposition to the diaphragm. When you squeeze in your stomach, that's going to push up on the diaphragm, which will then push up into the lungs. Our expiratory muscles then can be divided up into uh, different expiratory functions. One set compresses the abdominal viscera, the stuff in your abdomen like your intestines and your stomach, working indirectly opposite the diaphragm. Those are the rectus abdominis, the transverse abdominis, the external oblique abdominis, and the internal oblique abdominis. There are muscles that lower the rib cage, primarily by pulling on the lower ribs. Those are the internal intercostals, the transverse thoracis, and the serratus posterior inferior. And then finally, we also have some synergistic muscles whose job is primarily to stabilize uh, the posterior part of the abdomen. That's the quadratus lumborum, the latissimus dorsi, and the erector spinae muscles. The abdominal muscles are a major active force in forced expiration, coming from primarily the anterior part of the abdomen. Most abdominal muscles have an attachment to a tendinous sheet that's in the midline of the anterior abdomen called the abdominal aponeurosis. The rectus abdominis muscle runs through pockets in the abdominal aponeurosis, and this is what gives the uh, six-pack shape to a set of abdomens, uh, abdominal muscles when you have extremely low body fat. The midline of the abdominal aponeurosis runs from the xiphoid process at the base of the sternum to the pubic symphysis. This is called the linea alba. The abdominal aponeurosis also extends laterally on each side to a line called the linea semilunaris. So the abdominal aponeurosis provides a central exterior point of attachment for the abdominal muscles, kind of like the central tendon in the middle of the diaphragm. The rectus abdominal muscles are a set of uh, muscles that run vertically from the front of the pel pelvis on the ilium and the pubic bone near the symphysis to insert into the lower ribs and the xiphoid process. Rectus abdominis is going to pull downward on the front margin of the rib cage, will uh, depress the lower ribs as well as compress the abdominal viscera working in opposition to the diaphragm. The transverse abdominis originates on the lower vertebral column and inserts into the abdominal aponeurosis, superiorly into the cartilages of the lower ribs, and inferiorly to the ilium and the pubic bones. This is called the transverse abdominis because the fibers run along the transverse plane. Uh, and this is the deepest layer of abdominal muscle. So in the image to the right, you see them uh, only as other pieces of uh, muscle and the abdominal aponeurosis are cut away to show them underneath. The external oblique abdominis come from the lower ribs and insert into the iliac crest and the abdominal aponeurosis. Fibers for this muscle uh, go downward and forward, external to the rectus abdominis. These muscle fibers will pull on the lower ribs to compress the rib cage and uh, again work in opposition to the diaphragm. The internal obliques are a set of uh, oblique muscle fibers beneath the uh, external obliques. They come from the iliac crest and the hip, fanning uh, outward and upward, anteriorly and superiorly, and are more or less at right angles to the external obliques. 
They insert into the abdominal aponeurosis and the cartilages of the lower ribs. So they will pull down in the lower ribs and also compress the abdominal viscera. So overall, with our abdominal muscles, we have uh, fiber, fibers running vertically, transverse, uh, and uh, diagonally at both angles. So we have a whole uh, cross network of abdominal muscle fibers that can compress the abdominal viscera and also pull down in the lowest ribs. The quadratus lumborum is the uh, posterior part of the abdominal wall. It comes from the iliac crest and inserts, inserts into lumbar vertebrae and also into the lowest rib. Contraction of this muscle would provide a, a stable posterior surface to the abdominal wall, which helps support compression uh, from the anterior abdominal muscles. So I've been talking about the abdominal muscles working indirectly. Uh, the idea would be that uh, contraction of the abdominal muscles is going to pull uh, on the lower ribs, which is going to work in opposition to our um, inspiratory muscles and to the diaphragm. But also, um, contraction of the anterior abdominal muscles is going to compress all of the contents of the abdominal cavity. Those contents can't really go posterior because the uh, vertebral column is in the way. Um, they can't really go inferior because you have the uh, pelvic girdle on there. So if you compress them anteriorly, the only direction of movement they really have is superior pushing into the diaphragm. For muscles that work more directly on the rib cage itself, uh, the primary one is the internal intercostals. These muscles originate in the upper surface of each rib and insert into the lower surface of the rib above, coursing vertically and anteriorly. So these are uh, form kind of an X pattern with the external intercostals. So they work in opposition to the external intercostals, lowering and compressing the rib cage if the lower ribs are stabilized. Uh, this image, which is not from your book, gives a little bit clearer uh, of a view of the striations of the external versus internal muscles, how they course, and then the effect that they would have on the ribs. So the external intercostals, since they course downward and forward, when they contract, they're going to stretch out those costal cartilages between the ribs and the sternum. Since the internal intercostals run downward and backward, when they contract, they're going to pull the ribs downward, which is going to return those uh, stretched costal cartilages back to their original state or compress them further by drawing the sternum toward the ribs. The transverse thoracic muscles are a set of muscles that come from the lower part of the sternum on the inside of the thoracic cavity and uh, extend upward and laterally internal to the ribs. Uh, to insert into some of the upper ribs. So this muscle will work directly to shorten the costal cartilages to draw the ribs toward the sternum, which will uh, reduce the size of the thoracic cavity, which will compress the rib cage and therefore compress the lungs. The serratus posterior inferior are a set of muscles at the bottom of the rib cage. Um, that again work diagonally compared to some of our other razor muscles like the serratus posterior superior or the levators costarum. So these muscles come from the lower uh, vertebrae spinous processes for thoracic vertebrae 11 and 12 and um, lumbar vertebrae 1, 2, and 3. They slant upward and outward to insert into the lowest five ribs. So these are going to pull downward on the lower ribs as well as stabilize the lower ribs um, for action uh, for things like the internal intercostals to help compress the ribs. The, latissim the latissimus dorsi is a large superficial muscle in the back, comes from the sacrum and the lumbar vertebrae and lower thoracic vertebrae. It inserts into the arm just below the armpit. This would be another muscle whose primary function in anatomy would be involved in moving the arm around. If you've ever done any uh, uh, lat machine exercises in the gym, for example, that basically pulling down uh, against a weight. Um, but for respiration purposes, this muscle can help uh, stabilize the posterior abdominal wall, 
along with the Chondratus lumborum. The erector spinae muscles are a variety of posterior muscles that we're not going to go into in detail. Um, their primary role is really movement of the head and their vertebral column, but uh, to the extent that these muscles can um, also stabilize the uh, posterior thoracic cavity and um, pull from the uh, vertebrae onto the ribs um, in the opposite direction from things like the um, uh, levator costarum. Um, they provide another stabilizer for the posterior um, uh, part of the body and can help hold the ribs in place for the action of other muscles.